Auschwitz. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the introduction and I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to Korea, which uh, is always one of my favorite countries. Uh, so this is, uh, oops, going too fast. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Claude Carlet, Philippe Gaborit from France and Kim John Lark uh, from uh, Korea. Uh, okay, so... So the interesting point of the talk is uh, we see some kind of industrial application of cell dual codes in, uh, in fact, S boxes. So you might think it's cryptography. In fact, it's more like security. And okay, so if you have any trouble with the motivation, you will ask Claude, <laughs> who knows much better than me. <laughs> okay. So uh, there is uh, something called uh, differential power analysis and basically the situation is like this. So suppose you have a crypto system which is embarked, for instance, uh, think of your smart card. Uh, so one way uh, this system links information is through uh, electric uh, consumption. So for instance, it, can, it was shown by Kosher in Crypto99 that uh, just by monitoring this power consumption, you can get some information on the algorithm and in particular on the values of uh, the variables that occur in the said uh, crypto algorithm. So this is called as uh, differential power analysis. And of course, this can be uh, very dangerous if you don't have some uh, proper uh, counter measures and I should say that this kind of attack belongs to a, a general class of attacks called side channel attacks which are very uh, uh, fashionable in crypto today okay so uh, so one natural counter measure is so called boolean masking so what is boolean masking basically it's a kind of secret sharing method of the crypto variable x so basically you s split it in say d plus one shares and uh, you have a, um, so called a masking operation and um, basically uh, before the, the current work uh, it was believed that you had you have to add many shares in order to achieve uh, higher security. And of course, this is costly in terms of hardware and it's also not very secure. And so uh, one uh, teamwork on uh, side channel attack is constituted of uh, Claude and some of my colleagues at Telecom. And the idea was to encode the mask uh, in the sense that if X is a variable you want uh, to hide, uh, then, uh, for instance, at order one, you will represent X by this pair, F of M plus X plus M. And F is a kind of uh, bijection, uh, one to one and one to map. So, of course, it's a vectorial Boolean function, if you wish, it's a permutation of a large finite field and uh, it can be shown uh, that uh, to achieve uh, security uh, you need so ki some kind of uh, correlation condition which is called graph correlation immunity because uh, people usually call the, uh, the pair x f of x the graph of the boolean function f okay so what is the graph correlation immune? So uh, basically uh, we want uh, some permutation of F2 to the N uh, such that from some integer D uh, for every pair of vectors uh, such that the, the pair AB, if you wish, the concatenated vector is non-zero and of weight less than D strictly, then uh, the wash transform of F on this vector is zero. 
So this is what uh, we call uh, CGI of order D for graph correlation immune. And the reason I'm involved in this is uh, can we use coding theory to build up such Boolean functions? Okay, so le let me review some, uh, some basic notions of coding theory to, that I need. So, uh, as you know, uh, I will talk about codes and sometimes they are not linear, so I, I call this code unrestricted and it's just a, a bunch of vector of F2 to the N. So the N is the length of the code. And further, the code is systematic if there is a, a set I of um, indices so that if you project uh, the code on this index then you get uh, one to one parameterization. So this set is called an information set. Okay, so that's a very important notion. And uh, in the linear case, if you have a linear code of rate one half, it is said to be in systematic form if you can put the generator matrix uh, up to colon permutation as uh, identity of order n times one block concatenated with one block n by n. And further uh, case of interest is when A is cir circulant, so in that case uh, the code is said to be double circulant or pure double circulant. Okay, so I will also need uh, some self-dual code because uh, I have a class of codes which generalize self-dual code. So recall if you have a linear code, the, du the dual is understood with res respect to the standard Euclidean product. So the code is self-dual if it's equal to its dual. Okay, so everybody knows the amine weight and everybody knows the weight enumerator. And it is formally self-dual if the weight enumerator behaves like, like that of a linear code for under Mark Williams transform. That is, it is invariant under this linear substitution of variables. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, the object we will consider is so-called CIS code for complementary information set codes. So basically we, we want a binary linear code of rate one half so that you can partition uh, the coordinate set into two sets which are information sets each of size n and in fact uh, one nice case is when this partition is 1n n plus 1 to n so th we call this systematic partition and if you think for a while you can see that uh, the notion of information set the complement of, of an information set is an information set for the dual code so the notion of CAS code is invariant under um, uh, duality and in particular if it is easy to see that if you have a, a self-dual code then it is CIS. Okay. Okay, so what is the connection with uh, CGI function? Uh, basically uh, the idea is like so is to use uh, the function as a kind of redundancy so you view uh, your code in systematic form like this, like pairs x, f of x. And uh, if you have this writing, so if you have a systematic code uh, of rate one half, you can always write it like so. And in that case, the code is CIS if and only if uh, the right hand side is uh, information set, which means essentially that f is a permutation. And in particular, in the linear case, uh, you want uh, the code to be put into the form IA with A non singular. And uh, the theorem uh, that connects the Boolean function and CIS code is that the permutation is uh, DCGI if the, the code has dual distance at least D. So that's where we use a little bit of uh, McWilliams theory. So let me recall what is uh, 
dual distance in the sense of Delsart. Uh, so if you have a binary code, um, maybe not linear, then you can always define the distance distribution, that is uh, number of pairs of codewords at a given distance. And then uh, the dual distance distribution is a McWilliams transform of the distance distribution, that is first you, you form the weight enumerator for the distance, the distance distribution, and then you take uh, the McWilliams transform, that is you do this algebraic substitution. And now if you look at the xy expansion, then it will start by one, some zeros, and then at some point it will be non-zero. Then the dual distance is just the smallest i, so that the coefficient is non-zero. And uh, of course, if the code is linear, that's the dual distance is no one else than the distance of the dual. But uh, we will have uh, unrestricted code in this talk. Okay, so do you prove that? Uh, well, we need to introduce uh, the, the characters, so-called characters uh, of a code, which is essentially a, a sum of characters on the vector of the code. And uh, essentially, uh, the dual distance is the smallest non-zero weight of a vector, so that the character attached to this vector is non-zero on the code. And the, the key observation is that uh, uh, the, the value of the Walsh transform at the point A, B is uh, this character uh, for U equal to the concatenated vector A, B. Okay, so that's the connection uh, between uh, coding theory and uh, Boolean function theory. Okay, so to, to construct uh, nonlinear codes, uh, the only uh, uh, technique I know is Z4 code, so let me review Z4 code briefly. So Z4 code is just uh, Z4 submodule of Z4 to the N. So that means uh, uh, Z4, remember that uh, Z4 is a ring and not a field, so we have to use the language of modules. And there is a gray map from Z4 to F2 square, so uh, which is given by this. So the point is that uh, uh, 0 is mapped to 0, 0, and 2 is mapped to 1, 1. And of course, uh, if you have vectors, you just extend component by component. And uh, I leave you as an exercise to check that this is not, of course, uh, a map in the sense of uh, groups, that is, uh, you have uh, a group of exponent 4, it cannot be mapped on a group of ex exponent 2. But still, it's a one-to-one -one map. And uh, the gray image of a quaternary code is just uh, the ensemble of all uh, uh, gray images, and uh, I will define the least distance as the amming distance of the binary image. And okay, so uh, if you have a, a Z4 code, it's a module over Z4, so there is something that generalizes the dimension, which is the type. So you have two numbers, so K is the number of uh, vectors of period 4, and L is the number of vectors of period 2, so the, the vectors that only contain zeros and twos. And I will need the notion of free code, so code is free if all vectors have period 4. So in, in other words, you don't have vectors which consist only of zeros and two. Okay, so a uh, very important uh, family of Z4 codes is that of extended uh, quadratic residue codes. So basically uh, they generalize and are attached to a classical uh, binary quadratic residue code. And okay, I don't have time to explain, but they are constructed via Ansel lifting. So, so what are uh, quadratic residue codes? Uh, let me recall that if N is a quadratic residue uh, mod 2, then you want to construct cyclic codes of length n uh, by their generator. And essentially you have this factorization. 
and in two, two parts of equal degree and it's called quadratic residue code because if you look as the exponent of the root alpha of order n in the zeros so some people call this a characteristic set the characteristic set consists of the, the square of uh, fp if n is a prime okay uh, so for instance uh, an example everybody knows if you look at the amine codes you have it can be viewed as a quadratic residue code attached to the prime 7 and okay if you use ensel lifting you can have a factorization of x7 minus 1 so that each uh, factor reduce to the preceding mod 2 okay so if you reduce this mod 2 you get this if you reduce that one mod 2 you get that okay and that's the way we define uh, a quadratic reduce code over z4 by just by taking the free code with uh, generator that one okay so now how do we construct nonlinear CIS codes from z4 codes so the idea is to start from a free z4 code of length 2n with 2 to the n code words and we will say it is CIS if it contains two disjoint information set and of course the idea is that uh, by gray mapping if you have a free systematic z4 code of length 2n with 2 to the n code words then the binary image is a systematic code uh, of the form cf for some f and uh, yeah of course and c furthermore the the code is cis with a systematic partition if the f in question is one to one okay so let me review some uh, old favorite of z4 codes so for instance you have the nostrum robinson code in length 16 over f2 which can be obtained from a, a code of length 8 over z4 which is a so-called octa code and okay the generator matrix is explicit so you can check the code is free and it is uh, self-dual so therefore it's cis and so from that we did use that the nostrum robinson is a systematic uh, nonlinear code of length 16 and the nice thing is that uh, uh, so we have uh, dual distance 6 so we, we have a gain of one one unit compared to uh, the best uh, linear CIS code okay so you so as i said octa code correspond to the prime seven no you can look at the prime uh, 23 and in fact it's a code which is a, a lift of the Golay code so it's a kind of z4 analog of the Golay code and if you take the binary image you obtain a, a code which is uh, formally self-dual with distance 12 and this is as good as the best uh, binary self-dual code of that length in fact uh, the 48 24 12 uh, is a quadratic residue code I think it's unique anyway um, okay now if we move to the prime 31 then we obtain a, a code whose binary image is better than the best known uh, binary code with these parameters and similarly uh, for the prime 47 okay so this is an old story but more recently uh, people from Bayreuth have had some breakthrough results uh, over Z4 in particular they computed the leeway enumerator of uh, the quadratic residue attached to 79 and they found out the lead distance to be 26 and this is better than the best known uh, so twice 80 is 160 so 26 is better by two units than the binary counterpart okay so this is of course you don't have so many construction of good z4 codes they, these are very rare objects now if we go back to 
uh, more uh, practical techniques. You can look at construction for linear case, for linear CIS codes. And uh, as I said, uh, any linear code with a generator IA with a non-singular is CIS, and conversely, if you are CIS, then you can be put into that form. And in particular, uh, if A is circular, then there is a nice test uh, to know when uh, the matrix is non-singular. You just want uh, the generator polynomial of the matrix, so to speak, the first row polynomial, if you want, to be co-prime with Xn minus 1. And also we will have some nice example when A is a combinatorial matrix, in particular the matrix of a strongly regular graph or doubly regular tournament because in that case A satisfies a quadratic equation which makes it easy to compute uh, the rank or at least to, to know when it's non-singular. Okay, so let me recall some basic facts. So th there are two cases of interest. <coughs> So if you know the theory of association schemes, there are two classes of association scheme of class 2. So one is a symmetric case. Sorry. So the symmetric case corresponds to a symmetric matrix A, and in that case A is the adjacent symmetric of a so-called strongly regular graph, which satisfies this quadratic equation. And the non-symmetric case, in fact, it's anti-symmetric, and in that case A is a adjacent symmetric of a doubly regular tournament, and it satisfies that equation. And in fact, it can be shown that this object is equivalent to uh, uh, so-called skew Adama matrices, if you border them uh, suitably. And of course you have to pass to from 0, 1, well, to plus minus 1. Okay, so uh, no, using these combinatorial matrices, we can construct CIS codes. So uh, sometimes, so I use this matrix M, sometimes it's A plus I, sometimes it's A plus J. And you have to discuss on the parity of all the four parameters, V, kappa, lambda, mu. And in, if you do that, you can. Uh, you can find cases where these matrices are non-singular. Okay, in practice, you can also have good codes from these combinatorial matrices. So not only non-singular, but the, the weight will be good. And in particular, uh, one nice case is when uh, uh, you have the strongly regular graph attached to the squares in a finite field. And uh, in half of the cases, according to congruence mode 4, you are either a strongly regular graph or a doubly regular tournament. And I should say that these codes are related to a class of code introduced by Gaborit, which are the quadratic double circulant. Okay, so. Um, Okay, there are some easy construction used by considering cyclic codes. And the trick is to remember that if you have a cyclic code of dimension k, if you take any consecutive k indices in your um, coordinate positions, any consecutive k coordinate position form an information set, just because there is a recurrence. And using this observation, you, you can show that uh, if you have cyclic code with a proper length that is odd and the proper dimension, then uh, the extended code is CIS with a systematic partition. Okay. Uh, so this is positive thinking. Now we can have uh, negative thinking. We can try to think when a code is not CIS. And in fact, uh, we'll come up soon with example of an optimal code which is not CIS. 
and if you have a 2n encode uh, which is blocked in that way with a rank of a less than n over 2 then the code is not serious so let me try to prove this uh, because if you have um, because the rank is uh, small on the right hand side if you have suppose you have two distinct information set they must uh, have more than n over 2 elements on the left uh, therefore on, on the left they must intersect non-trivially so the code clearly the code cannot be CIS and in fact this is uh, this is a, a spe very special case of a more general condition uh, which was explored by uh, Jack Edmonds in the 60s in the context of matroid theory and basically if you, look, if you look at the set of colon of your generator matrix say sigma then the code is CIS if, if you take any set B of colon then you want the rank to be at least the size of B over 2 so not, not only when the case where the size of B is N but in any, for any size of B and of course there is one direction which is uh, trivial that is if you violate this condition then you cannot be CIS but the other con condition is less trivial and uh, there is a so-called uh, Edmonds uh, matroid based packing CRM and in fact this uh, CRM is uh, completely algorithmic and uh, uh, Finley Freibert has worked out the algorithm and this is uh, the next, uh, next article on the topic okay let us do this to say that uh, we apply uh, this serum matroids on the matroid of colons of the generator matrix under linear dependence. Okay, so okay, and so this is uh, some very nice conditions. There is an even more trivial condition for uh, counter example that is, if you have a code whose dual has minimum weight one then certainly C is not CIS because this corresponds to the case where uh, the generator matrix has a zero colon and therefore uh, there is a, you cannot take this colon in an information set and in fact if you look at example you, you can have optimal codes with a zero colon which is not obvious <laughs> if you don't uh, look at the tables so uh, so of course we have used the uh, Marcus Russell table and the uh, attached uh, magma package uh, which is uh, best non-linear code so this package uh, implements the code uh, which occurs in Marcus table and so by working uh, with this uh, package we were able to show that uh, basically uh, for every uh, n we can find codes uh, which are CIS and are either optimal, best possible or best known as of this table. So of course the table is a function of time so best known today can be not so, so good tomorrow but anyway just by using uh, this input uh, already uh, uh, we can find uh, optimal CIS code which are not subdual in length 6 uh, we can uh, even find CIS which are not formally subdual and optimal uh, in length 20 and in fact uh, we have a best known linear code uh, in that sense, which is not CIS uh, in length 34 because in that case the uh, dual distance is 1 so we, it's a bit surprising that th there are optimal codes whose uh, dual is so bad but that's a fact of life oops, sorry okay uh, so 
So we, so many people uh, in that room have heard about the building up construction due to John Lark. And uh, uh, before we go into this, let me give you a, a, some uh, bare end try at classification. If you call GN the cardinal of uh, the group of invertible n by n binary matrices, it is well known that the size of GN is this. And uh, if you think on, on this IA type of construction, you will see very easily that the number of equivalence classes of CIS codes of dimension n is at most uh, GN divided by n factorial. Just because you, you can permute the the colon of the matrix A. And in fact, uh, these numbers grow very fast and they have a nice combinatorial interpretation. But of course, if you really want to do classification, this is uh, very crude. So that's why we need the building up construction. Uh, so uh, as usual, you want to start from a, a code of length 2n and move to length 2n plus 2 and dimension n plus 1, so which means essentially you need to add two colons to the generator matrix, two colons and one row. And then uh, you work out the linear algebra for the resulting code to be uh, still CIS. And in fact, okay, so let me give you some example. So here is, a, the, here is an example of a CIS code of length 6. And now if you apply the building up construction, we get a self-dual uh, code of length 8, so which is certainly uh, CIS. And it's also optimal, of course. And the nice thing about uh, the building up is that it can be reversed, so there is a converse. So uh, essentially, uh, if you have a CIS code of length 2n, uh, then it's equivalent to a code with a systematic partition which is constructed from a <coughs> CIS code by the building up and uh, of uh, length uh, 2 less. Okay? And using this technique, uh, you can uh, look at the classification. And the interesting facts about this table, so the, you, you will see this number in parentheses, so it stands for uh, self-dual, formally self-dual, and none of the previous. So for instance, if you look in length 12, you have only, uh, in distance 2, you have only two codes of which are self-dual, about 300 which are formally self-dual, and more than a thousand uh, which are neither. Okay? And in distance four, the same phenomenon. And so morally, uh, this classification result show you that the class of CIS is much richer than the class of self-dual codes because you can see that the, the number grow much faster. Okay, and uh, for asymptotics, uh, uh, I enjoy myself uh, to derive the version of Gilbert Bond uh, by hand, just by counting. And of course, uh, if I were lazy, I could have used the fact that cell dual codes are CIS and then you can use the standard result that cell dual codes are above Varsham of Gilbert. Uh, okay, and so for people who are interested in AG codes, uh, Kuebermann has shown that if you use uh, AG code of a large alphabet and a trace orthogonal basis, then you have families of cell dual codes constructible in polynomial time and with a delta which is much smaller, of course, dot O2, but still non-zero. Okay, so before the conclusion, let me give uh, some open problems. So I think it, it would be nice to uh, classify CIS codes over other fields and rings. For instance, the first candidate would be Z4, and 
it might be of some interest to generalize uh, uh, the building up construction over Z4. Also, uh, another track, I, I think this is uh, not a good track, but it seems obvious that uh, if you want a permutation uh, over a finite field, the permutation is a permutation polynomial. So if you uh, look at the non-families of permutation polynomial, can you construct a uh, good code from them? And it seems, um, well, the non-families are not big enough to give you any good codes. Okay, so you can look at quasi-cyclic codes of rate one half. So of course there is some trivial case as double circulant when they are CIS, but maybe they are smarter conditions. Yeah, also by looking at example of Z4 codes uh, for this talk uh, or for this work, I was surprised that there is a big gap in the literature between uh, 48 and 80, so I wonder is it true or is just because people didn't look carefully, uh, I don't know. So it seems there is a big depletion of good uh, red one have three Z4 codes in that big range. And for people who lack asymptotics, uh, you can look, uh, you can do negative thinking, so can you find uh, a positive proportion of uh, of uh, good long codes which are not CIS or just just a family of uh, a good family of codes uh, which is not CIS and of course uh, maybe you can use uh, AG codes to construct uh, CIS codes Okay, so in conclusion, uh, apparently to the best of my knowledge, this notion of CIS code is new. And it's surprising because uh, it's uh, very simple and it's uh, a generalization of cell dual codes. Of course, you cannot play all the games you play with cell dual codes. For instance, the tool of invariant theory is not there, but still you can use the building up construction and there is something like a mass formula. And I would like to say that, in my opinion, Boolean masking is the first honest application of self-dual codes. Thank you. <laughs>